this is Stuff You Like, you can call me Ursa, and you would not believe how many of the things I am reviewing this year which are owned by Disney. They own the world now. But anyway, Star Wars Episode 7 is coming out in cinemas this year and I am so excited, so excited you guys. But why? Haven't I been burned before? Don't I remember going to the cinema and seeing The Phantom Menace and coming out at the end and going, that was okay? Don't I remember going to see Attack of the Clones and going, well, it was alright, I guess? And don't I remember going to see Revenge of the Sith and ranting about it afterwards? Well, yes, I do. But hope springs eternal, every cloud has a silver lining and other such cliches, and we are all about being positive here at Stuff You Like, because apparently it helps prevent heart attacks or something. Who knew? And so we're going to talk about all six Star Wars movies this year. Yes. The plot of The Phantom Menace goeth thusly. The Galactic Republic is having a few problems because the Trade Federation has blockaded Naboo and they are planning to invade because... reasons. Actually because they're puppets. Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi are sent to be diplomatic. This doesn't go so well. They have to evacuate the Queen to Tatooine where they meet baby Anakin Skywalker who's actually evil Jesus because of virgin birth. Except they just think he's regular Jesus, but that's not the point. And then they're pleading with the Senate. There are some Sith and Qui-Gon dies and Obi-Wan vows to train Anakin. And also there are more different aquatic people, including Jar Jar Binks, who is probably the most hated Star Wars character in the entire franchise. And then there's a big battle at the end and the Trade Federation are kicked off Naboo and yay? Rewatching The Phantom Menace as an adult and trying very hard to be fair, it seems like it's a pretty decent movie wrapped in a not very good at all one. The ideas are interesting, the scale is epic, the costumes are amazing, John Williams really is the man. The 40 minutes on Tatooine run the previously sprightly pacing into a wall. We run all over the place with too many characters, nobody actually has much of a character arc, and there are a large number of random stupid plot holes. Why has the droid army landed on the opposite side of the planet to the capital city. Why are you taking Jar Jar into Tatooine? Careful, master, the town is a wretched hive of scum and villainy. Well, I better take Jar Jar from some comic relief then, hadn't I? While stuff like the Phantom Edit, where they cut out most of the fluff and all of the Jar Jar, are definitely an improvement, I think the way to make it best is for me and make this story, The Phantom Menace, about Padme, a young girl whose power is mostly as a figurehead pleading with a corrupt senate, her pacifistic instincts warring with the feeling that maybe the only way to win is to fight. And maybe, yeah, if you must, figuring out some way to get her off the planet so that they can go to Tatooine so that the Jedi can meet Anakin. Sure, but skate lightly over that, because it is for a different movie. Spend less than 15 minutes on Tatooine if you can avoid it. Skip all of the awkward, this is totally how human being people talk dialogue. Have the Jedi and Anakin and the Gungans take a backseat and boom. But it'd be a solid 90-ish minute Star Wars-esque coming of age story about a 14 year old girl in way over her head and doing pretty well regardless. With explosions, fight scenes, cool stuff like that. What's not to like? But my dreams of improvements aside, most of the prequels just don't seem to make sense on sometimes a storytelling level, sometimes a physics level, sometimes a logic level, but I have a solution for that too. Okay, first, do you know what a fandom is? Right, obviously you know what a fandom is. A fandom is a collection of people who gather around a specific thing like a sports team or a book series or a movie franchise. That was a bad question. Do you know what a fandom can be to the creators of the thing? A resource. Not just consumers, not just sit back and watchers, but an actual resource. The people writing Star Wars fanfic at 12 may be the people who grew up to write the Star Wars novelizations or the plots to the video games or whatever. They are the people who will promote the content and share the content and adapt the content and remix the content and they will do it all for free for the love of the thing. Which brings us to the title of this episode, The Fandom Medley, which of course refers to Moose Butter's John Williams as the man a cappella medley. This is Corey Williams lip syncing to it, which was the closest I could get to a video. It will get stuck in your head. But hey, they are creative and amazing and smart and they make awesome stuff. But I don't really have much to say about a song because I'm not actually Todd in the Shadows. It was just to give me an excuse to make a terrible pun for the episode title. The real magic is here. Darths and droids. Once upon a time there was a guy called Seamus Young who took screen caps from the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy and turned them into a comic. A comic called DM of the Rings, where the plot of the stories was turned into a Dungeons and Dragons game with a railroading, barely competent dungeon master who loved his NPCs a little too much. The story of Aragorn, who kept trying to hit on Legolas because he was clearly a leggy blonde and therefore a lady. The story of many unhappy characters and their dungeon master who really, really wanted to keep them on topic. Thing is, I'm not really a Lord of the Rings person. So while I liked the story and I liked the jokes and I read it all the way through to the end, it didn't grab me quite as much as its spiritual successor. 
Enter Darths and Droids, which did a similar thing with Star Wars, created by two Andrews, three Davids, and a Steven, with some additional material provided by one Ian and one Loki. No, really. Both are screen cap comics based on making the movies into a D&D game in a universe where Lord of the Rings or Star Wars doesn't exist. But I like Darth and Droids better. Not just because it's Star Wars, but because of the plot and the characters. You've got Jim, brash and impulsive and initially playing Qui-Gon, but he keeps getting his characters killed, so by the time you're in Empire Strikes Back, he's playing Han Solo. You have Ben playing Obi-Wan, you have Min Maxer Munchkin Pete who plays a short, mute droid so he can be a better mechanic, and Annie, the wannabe act- and my favourite characters, Sally, who's Ben's little sister and the GM. And every character has arcs in their own continuity and it's amazing. A big reason I like Darths and Droids is because of the GM. The poor games master, sorely maligned, never named, trying to run a campaign where everyone can enjoy themselves, having to respond on the fly to Sally's suggestions so as not to upset little girls and make them cry, coming to terms with the fact that her suggestions are much more creative than his, and being persuaded to allow all kinds of stuff by recalcitrant players who try to fast talk their way out of everything. That and loot the bodies. Always. And the thing about it is, it makes me love Star Wars more, not less. Is it takes the prequels and it makes them into something funny. And it does this by giving you an explanation with which any DM can sympathise. I mean, you had your idea and you had your players and you kind of wanted them to have fun and stuff so you gave them their heads and then things got a little bit out of hand. Of course Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan decide to split up. They're worried about air supply. Of course the Gungans ride dinosaur ponies. They were invented by an eight-year-old girl. That's not a rebreather, it's underwater oxygen extraction apparatus, which is why they couldn't use those things 15 minutes prior when the room was filling with poison gas. And naturally there are two fish then gets eaten by bigger fish moments in a row. The GM is in desperate need of some better random encounter tables. You are attacked by a wall of living salad. Go. Read. Love. As of now, they're still on The Empire Strikes Back, but that just means you have a whole lot of archive to binge on until you get caught up. And I'll see you next time.